Hey, what's going on? We're on Twitter today checking out awards profile. They have the element of the day, which I thought was a really cool little text animation with these colors. If you missed it, we can watch again what I recreated. That is what we're going to cover how to do today. Stick around, find out. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, let's have a look at what we'll cover today. We're going to see how to split text into characters with the split type library. We're going to see how to prevent flash of unstyled content with a little custom CSS and GSAP's auto alpha property. We're going to use GSAP's register effect function to create a custom repeatable color change animation. And we're going to use function based values to looping to loop through an array of colors and apply each color to each letter on a GSAP timeline. It's going to get wild. So let's hop into Webflow and see how to build this. So the Webflow project is very simple. We have page here, which is a min height of 100 VH and overflow set to hidden and then just aligning things in center with Flexbox. This heading has pretty much no styling applied to it, except in the settings over here, I have WB element equals rainbow text as a data attribute. Okay, so that's really everything within our navigator, but we'll check out page settings real quick. And if I come down here, we can see on the first line, I'm loading a script. I'm loading GSAP here. On the second line, I'm loading the split type library. On the third line, I am loading some custom code that I wrote on my own computer. So if you, you could host this on Code Sandbox or in VS Code, today I'll be using VS Code. And then I have this style tag here. I'm using a data attribute as a CSS selector, that WB element equals a rainbow text that we just saw. And we're setting the visibility to hidden. This is so that when the page initially loads, the text isn't there as some font that hasn't loaded yet without any color applied to it. So it's going to be hidden at first, and then we'll use some code to make sure that it reveals at the right time when we start our animation. So let's hop into the code and see how to do this. All right, we'll go ahead and start by defining a constant that's an array called colors array. And the order of how we specify our colors in here is going to matter. And I noticed there were six colors. It goes from orange to dark blue to red to pink to light blue and then to yellow and finally to black. That is not six, that is seven colors, but we're ending on black, so it's okay. Is black a color? You let me know in the comments. Next, we define a step duration equal to 0.1. I'm saying that the change between each letter showing is gonna take 0.1 seconds here. And what's nice about this is that by storing it in a variable, I can change it very easily later. Next, we're gonna grab a reference to the text that we wanna animate using that CSS selector with the data attribute. So we have here document.querySelector equals wb dash element equals rainbow text. Pay very close attention to how these quotes are structured inside of there. And we're storing that in a variable called text. Next, to prevent the flash of unstyled content, now we can use gsap.set on our text element and set the auto alpha property to one. Essentially what it is, is it makes the visibility actually visible once the opacity is greater than zero. Next, we're gonna split the text into characters using the split type library. So with that, we can just instantiate a new instance of split type. And that's gonna take two parameters. First, it gets text, which we stored in that variable. And then it gets an object where we specify a property called types and pass it a value of chars or characters. And we'll store that in a variable called split text. Next, we wanna set the very first color for each individual letter. And we can do this by saying gsap.set split text.chars and pass an object where we set the color to the very first um, value within our colors array. So which is this orange key right here. I say key, but I mean, um, what do I mean? I mean value. Do I mean key or value? Not quite sure. Anyways, moving on. We create our own custom animation called change color. And this is where we're gonna utilize the GSAP register effect so that we don't have to repeat a bunch of code and timelines and things like that. So I'll say gsap.register effect, and this gets a little object in there. And we're gonna set the first property, which is a name to change color. So we could, we wanna use this change color name so that it's, uh, so that we know what we're doing when we call it on a timeline. And next, we're gonna set a property called effect, and the effect gets its own function being specified by these open, open and close parentheses, fat arrow, and then open close uh, curly brackets. And that function is gonna get references to the targets that are being animated and a config that we can pass. And our effect, we want to return gsap.set. So we're just gonna set each color. We're gonna say, hey, set the color to orange, set the color to blue set the color to yellow or whatever order it's in. And those are gonna happen immediately. So notice we're not using a dot to or dot from or something here. We're just using gsap.set. But it works very similarly in that it takes two arguments, the targets that we wanna hit and the properties that we wanna animate or in this case, set. And we're going to set the delay to config.duration and you'll see eventually that we're gonna pass this step duration in as the delay. 
so that it'll set itself and then wait 0.1 seconds and then it'll set itself to the next color, wait 0.1 seconds and you get the picture. And we also change the color to config.color. And you'll see later we're gonna loop through that colors array and that's how the color is gonna end up in here. The option that we pass to register effect also has a property called defaults and we'll just set the default duration to step duration. So if we don't pass a duration in our config, it's just gonna to default to 0.1, but we're gonna pass it anyways, just so I can show you how to do that. And then we have this property called extend timeline. We set it to true and this allows us to call the effect directly on a GSAT timeline using the name change color in this case. Okay, now we just wanna tween this thing. And to tween it, we can call gsap.from. And gsap.from gets two arguments or parameters here. And we'll pass for the first one split text.characters. So each individual character is gonna get this gsap from tween. And then the options object or the tween variables. We're gonna animate from a scale of zero. You notice in the animation it comes from zero, comes a little bit larger than one, and then comes back. And then we're gonna set the stagger to the step duration, which we stored in the variable above. And we'll set the ease to back dot out. This is how it's gonna go above one and then come back down to one. Okay, so this is where things get fun. We're gonna use function based values for our color property. And so color, we can, rather than giving it a value like yellow or orange, we can give it a function. And that function has access to an index and the target that this tween is being applied to. Now within our function body, so within the curly brackets, what we wanna do is make a timeline for each individual letter and that timeline is what's gonna be changing the color. So we make this variable called TL colors and we set it equal to gsap.timeline and call our timeline with open close parentheses. Now we're gonna loop through each color in the colors array and this gets a function as well. And so we're gonna get each individual color out of this for each function. And what we wanna do is call TL colors dot change color. Remember we said extend timeline was true so we can, we can do this. We said extend timeline true up here. So now we can do this on a timeline to change color, we'll pass those the target, like we said, you know, where the effect needs a target and it needs a config. So I have an empty object right now, but let's go ahead and pass our config. The very first property we'll pass is the duration and we're gonna pass step duration. Doesn't really matter here because that's the default value anyways, but again, just wanna show you. And then the color is the color. Now you could get by just by writing it like this. Depends what syntax you wanna use. I'll just do this just so that it's consistent for you. And really, that's all we need to do. Just go ahead and save, and we'll open up our project, and refresh, and we can see we get this fantastic animation. All right, I hope that helped. If it does, be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Additionally, I'll be throwing up some other videos that you might find useful within my GSAP library. All right, talk to you soon, bye.